fans of the fiddle, welcome! I'm going to keep two cameras rolling, one I will edit a little bit more than the other, but I thought maybe if you like fiddling and watching orchids being fiddled and roots being taken care of like me, then I'll see if I can get this to work. Make sure that I stay in focus for both cameras. Let's see how this goes. Good to have you here. I don't anticipate this job to be anything, you know, very, very long and tedious. The editing may just take me a little bit longer than actually doing what I'm going to do. I have Lelia Angareri and Lelia Millery crossed with long yeeps to repot. Uh, the reason being, I think it's probably best to get these in the ground, so to speak, because they're not doing any good with the roots exposed being jostled around in their Greek tubs. I don't have any active root tips on my Angareri, but you know what? Let me just say it this way. We're heading into climate that I do not want to have. I lie. I have one active root tip. That'll work for me. <laughs> but we're heading into a climate where these guys are comfortable. You know, they can take my low winter temperatures. But I want to give them enough time still to settle in to their new homes. I am going to go with Lava Rock and Semi Hydro. The reason I'm not using Ceramis this time of year is because it's going to be colder, it's going to be wetter. So by the time we come through to spring when temperatures rise, I should be okay with having them established in their pots that through the warmer summer months, I won't need to have the Ceramis to help me with water retention. That is the plan because normally I do actually Huh, always add Ceramis with my Rapiculus Lelias, but no, nah, in this case I decided, nah, let's just leave it. It's going to be fine. I'll be layering with different sizes of lava rock. And of course my tweezers are not where they're supposed to be, so the nails are going to have to do. Just want to get some moss away from the base here. Also for the purposes of making sure that nothing rots out. Not that it should, I've got plenty of airflow on my terrace. <laughs> but still, normally I don't take sheaths off of my Rapiculus Lelias, but when they're new like this, it gives me kind of a reference of how they perform when a new growth starts. I like to start with a clean slate. When I go quiet like this, usually it's because there's a lot of noise pollution in the background and if it is a problem to get rid of during editing, I can at least reduce the volume and then start talking again when, let's say, a moped drives by. <laughs> Give you a bit of a feel. Going to see how this works out. Two cameras and editing according to noise pollution. I got these two orchids from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones because I lost my first Angareri. It was a long battle. I thought I was going to come out on top, but hmm, yeah. So this one and the other one we're working with today are from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. So thank you once again to the two of you so much for your consideration and your generous, generous gift. It makes me smile. I can just remove this little pot of theirs and put you back in. I've just got seaweed in this tub. Seaweed this time of year is absolutely fine for Rapiculus lelias because they are continuous growers when it comes to being in winter climates. Millery crossed with Longipes. Longipes is from the Latin two words, longus meaning long, and pes meaning feet or stalk. So this becomes an adjective and the orchid is named according to the fact that it has a long stalk. 
Cool, huh? Now, I felt something very soft with my finger, and that is a very fresh root tip, so you be careful with that. It's a good thing to bring out the second camera today because it is an overcast day. The equipment won't heat up. So I'm hoping that everything is going to be in shot for us fans of the fiddle. And I'm not talking a little violin. <laughs> Okay, there's two in here. This one's tiny. This one is more established. So, right, I'm not going to be taking this bark off right here. That's going to stay. Otherwise, I'm going to make this one far too wobbly. And it is also growing a lovely root tip. So we're going to maintain that piece of bark for stability. But anything that is easily accessible that could pose a threat is coming off. Anything in between growths. Minding that new growth right there. I'm hoping this works because all I'm focusing on at this point is the camera over here on not the one to the left of me. <laughs> this better not be a dud. <laughs> I've got a beautiful root tip hugging that piece of bark right there. So I may Whoops, just leave it. Not fiddle too much. At least we've got root tips on this one. Let's do our best to maintain them. My resident moss is starting to take over as well. But I'm going to leave it as is. This is chunky, chunky bark. So it's not going to be near, not here nor there for when I put it into just lava rock. You guys. I think we are done. The moment you say words like that is when you should stop. That's your gut telling you you're done. <laughs> Anything beyond this stage, continue fiddling because you have that urge. That's when things go wrong. Let's check this out. You see this one broke off. That's a shame. Okay, never mind. Let's get this little area cleared up and let's pot them up. Right, so I have prepared two pots for semi-hydro. And these pots actually may look a little bit too big, but I promise you, if everything goes well and I'm thinking positively, they won't be. Now, because I don't have that much large lava rock, I am only going to be using half and half to crock the base. I'm going to fill up with nasty looking lecker. Just to use it up and get rid of it. And we'll continue with smaller nasty looking lecker just to use it up. So it doesn't go to waste. We'll eventually see it one day again if I have to repot these orchids. And I'm hoping that will be in about 8 to 10 years. <laughs> right. Next one is, I could go with another layer of even smaller nasty looking lecker. These are shards that I have collected over all my lecker cleaning years. But I think I'm going to now go with medium lava rock so the roots have something nice to get in. And then we're gonna check the height and the status quo of the orchid in the pot. There we go. The orchids, plural. I want them in the middle. And then I'm gonna fill around with small lava rock. I'm gonna start at the outer edges to protect any roots from getting hammered 
by the lava rock and the weight of it. I'm just doing this to stabilize my orchid so I can let go. Then we can work on the next one. There we go. That would be my third hand in place. Let's have a look at the millery crossed with longipes. That will work and I may need to get more small lava rock. But for the time being, we can put her into her position so that we can let go. Just like that. Let's get the respective tags in and put them where the holes are so that I know when I maneuver the orchid and she's filled with water, that I can then lean the pot in such a way that the water doesn't spill out. And make sure that those tags aren't blocking the view. Nah, looking good, looking good. What I'm going to do now is go to even smaller lava rock for the top. Let's keep an eye on that root right there. Keep some lava rock away from it. Watch out for the growths in the back here so that they're not too deep. And just maneuver, settle in the rock all around it, just how they like it, like back in nature. Not that they have lava rock, they more have limestone, granite, all that kind of material, but hey, this is not a restaurant. You grow in what you get, and then we just hope that they will be super happy and hopefully bloom for us one day. Now, I'm going to hold on to this one because this root system was much more extensive. That means that there's more gaps around the roots that it didn't have before. So I'm just going to pat a little bit and hopefully get some of that lava rock in and around the roots, seeing as it is you know, the season where things will get a little bit more damper and moister, etc., around the roots. I'm not too concerned with them drying out before they establish themselves for the coming spring summer season. But it's a it's a good idea to at least give them that same kind of wet atmosphere that they had prior, because I was actually cultivating them in their little pots in a wet dry cycle. Now, because the media is dry and the roots are soaking wet, I would love to flush them through and that is my normal inclination is to flush everything through so that the roots are wet, but the season is different. That means my considerations are different as well. The roots are wet, they've had their bit, now they can dry out and probably in about two or three days I will water them in. This one will get fertilizer at 200 parts per million thereabouts because it is in active growth and this one will not get fertilizer because I don't see any roots as such growing. I will be however watching because they've been soaking in seaweed prior to this repot. So this little active root tip is going to give me an inclination whether she is continuing to grow or is going to shut down based on the season. No watering in required for these two and they can go and join their compadres on the patio. Happy, happy days. Thank you so much, Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones for this treat. Love them. And thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you have any questions, please address those in the comments. Even if you don't have any questions, I love hearing from you guys. It's always so much fun. Hope you have a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.